I grew up in the southern, uh, southeast uh, part of Nigeria. You know, it's now known as Akwaibom State. Then I went to the northern part of Nigeria, which is predominantly Islamic, to go to college, where I got my first degree in catering and hotel management. And it's there that I met my husband, who was a pastor. And he moved into the seminary um, for higher education. And while there, I, we met um, a Minnesotan who was there for sabbatical. And that's how our journey here began. And life in Nigeria before this was um, just what I envisioned as a young woman and or a young girl. So was married, had my first baby. We were doing very well. Um, but we also lived in a difficult place in the country because of religious crisis. So, you know, we had moment of peace and moment of uproar. My husband had been here for eight months. So that's when the religious crisis was really bad and um, they sent, he called, no cell phone. <laughs> the phone was in the staff office. So they had to come and get me to take the call. And he just gave me all the information I needed um, to travel home to our church to get the necessary um, letters, documents that um, will help me get my visa. At night, it was a very unusual time when the bell rang and we knew something was wrong, but we didn't know what. So we all gathered in the chapel. When we got there, all the staff and faculty were already there and we knew something was really bad. So that's when the principal told us that they received um, a message that the, compound, the school complex was going to be attacked. They gave us a code. At night, if you see someone approaching, you use the word J. If the person res responds with a C, you know, standing for Jesus Christ, since we were in the seminary, then you will know that that person was part of the community. If the person did not respond appropriately, then you will raise an alarm. So we lived in fear for months. When I went to get the visa, got there at 4 a.m., stood in line till they opened. The first, there were six people ahead of me, all were denied. So with every denier, my sense of hope was just dwindling. And when I walked up and they gave me the visa, I just, I could not believe it. Um, I still have goosebumps when I think about those days. Um, and people were telling me, hide it because someone can steal it. It was like gold. There is nothing that we cannot overcome. Um, it used to be difficult to say that when you, when you don't fully understand what someone has gone through. But it's always helpful for me to hold out hope for every individual, even when you cannot see it today. Sometimes you will, because life does not have a straight line that we can say, yep, you know, that's how far I have to go. It's very curvy. And very often we give up just before we took that last turn. And my goal is to tell people to just take one more step.